There is one place on Earth which could provide the answer. Antarctica. And that large rectangle could be the most intriguing evidence yet. In 2000, it broke off the Ross Ice Shelf, the largest iceberg we've ever seen, as big as the state of Connecticut. So big, it could supply the United States with oil for five years. Hello, my name is Dr. Gregory Stone, and I'd like to share with you some previously unreleased footage from an expedition that Wes Skiles and I led to Antarctica about 20 years ago. We went down to study the largest iceberg in history, and it remains that even to this day. We were quite concerned at the time when it broke off from the Ross Ice Shelf in 2000 because it was the size of the state of Connecticut. I mean, that's big. It was contained enough fresh water to supply the United States for five years um, with all of its fresh water needs, uh, including agricultural. I mean, it was gigantic. And Wes called me up and, um, in July when it broke off and said, hey, let's go. So we gathered together our uh, supporters at National Geographic and elsewhere, the Fidelity Foundation and some other, other supporters, and we uh, set about organizing an expedition, and I believe ours was the last private expedition to the Antarctic. Uh, they've tightened up on these things quite a bit since then. And Recently, there's been an upsurge in interest in this uh, expedition because it was a very unusual, kind of one-of-a-kind effort. And I have been going through the tapes that Wes, the great Wes Skiles, uh, my dear friend Wes, shot uh, for this expedition. He shot 75 hours of tape, but he only used about uh, 45 minutes for a documentary that was very successful at the time and uh, recently it's been rediscovered and people have reached out to me and asked me for some more so here here you go I uh, have cobbled together uh, images that I thought uh, illustrated what we did well and uh, I want to share them with you the this is a uh, science dive this this about 10 minute video here and it shows how we would go out in small boats these zodiacs and bundled up in the latest and uh, warmest uh, possible ice diving gear available at the time uh, we would cast ourselves into the sea and see what we could learn uh, you've got um, somebody jumping in the water at that uh, moment out of the zodiac and then you're confronted with some of the most uh, not some of but the most spectacular sights I've ever seen in the ocean they were ice cathedrals uh, stretching down uh, thousands of feet underwater um, and uh, going off in all directions to as far as the eye could see we would uh, survey these sides looking for um, animals looking for the effect these icebergs had on the ocean and our hypothesis was that these icebergs uh, probably had some effect on the ocean and with global warming uh, we 
wanted to know what that effect was because we knew that we would be getting a lot more of it in the future. And what we found was that as the icebergs uh, ground their way, or icebergs, uh, as, as, you, as you may know, are fresh water. They are um, uh, a continuation of a glacier from land that goes out um, and breaks off and drops into the ocean. So they're fresh water, uh, like ice cubes, uh, in the ocean. And as they scrape their way across the Antarctic continent over thousands and millions of years, they pick up uh, terrigenous uh, substances, uh, things from land, uh, as they scrape the continent. And some of these materials are, um, in fact, act as fertilizers for the ocean. So to our um, surprise, although retrospectively we uh, probably should have anticipated it, as they melt, they release these nutrients from which they've gathered them from the continent into the water. And this causes a uh, plankton bloom. It's like fertilizing your garden outside. And as we got close to the giants uh, in the water, we saw increased levels of chlorophyll. We saw increased uh, abundance of animals and we saw what the future may look like uh, as more ice melts in this rapid claim changing climate scenario that we are in. And don't ever let anybody cast doubt in your mind about this. This is happening. We are uh, rapidly heating the planet from our anthropogenic, uh, it's just a fancy word for people, made um, uh, gases and activities that we do and uh, causing the planet to warm at the fastest rate that it has ever since uh, hominids, uh, those apes that walked up on two feet from which we descended, uh, the, the fastest rate of change ever since those hominids started uh, walking around the planet six million years ago. So uh, a lot of people say climate change uh, is, is natural, and it is. It happens and, and has been happening all the time, but it, it doesn't happen at this rate. And this rate, this rapid rate, is a result of us tinkering uh, with, the, with the Earth system. And it's a very dangerous kind of a tinkering because in science you always want to have a control uh, planet or situation when you change conditions on one or the other. You want to have a place where you know what the ocean would be like if you hadn't tampered with it. Now we don't have a control. We only have one Earth, uh, at least last time I checked, uh, anywhere near us. So we are conducting the largest uncontrolled experiment in the history of civilization. We are uh, willy-nilly heating the planet up and uh, it's heating up rapidly, it's heating up faster than we had originally thought and the effects of this are not going to wipe out all life on earth but it's going to make life very difficult, very uncomfortable for for humanity. The, the great irony of all of this of course is that it's the effects of climate change, things like sea level rise, um, bleaching of reefs, um, changes in distribution of uh, fisheries. Uh, oh, here's some nice shots of krill. I love this. The krill live under the ice um, uh, often, and they uh, um, are actually eating frozen um, plankton that was frozen in the sea ice, uh, and that's how they get their food in the winter, and it's how they get their food at sometimes during the summer. You're going to see two kinds of ice in this video. This, there's sea ice, which is frozen seawater, and then there's also uh, uh, icebergs, which are frozen freshwater. This image in front of you is uh, uh, under the pack ice, which is frozen seawater. And you can see the krill, if you look closely. Um, they're uh, one of the most abundant animals on the planet, and they're the food source uh, that everything in the Antarctic revolves around. And I'm a believer that the best way to understand a, 
uh, phenomena is to get in the water, look at it, get as close as you can to it, and um, assess it in that fashion. Uh, there's been rules uh, have been established since we did this expedition that you can't dive this close to icebergs anymore. So this is quite rare footage that you had divers um, uh, down, under, and in uh, the icebergs to, to make these observations. Now if you want to do this, you've got to send robots in and other, uh, other technical devices uh, that will um, not be so dangerous for people. Uh, it's beautiful down there. It's, uh, it's magical down there. Um, Antarctica diving is some of the, uh, my favorite diving in the world. I've, I've been on three expeditions down there and dived in every other ocean on the planet. And I have to say that the, the Antarctic is my favorite dive spot of all. Um, this is, uh, uh, myself, uh, swimming under the pack ice, uh, towards the camera. I've got a light that I'm carrying, um, uh, this was for a cinematic effect. Uh, Wes asked me to uh, point it uh, behind me as I swam towards him for the um, for the for the look. Uh, it was a collaboration of uh, two good friends, uh, Wes and myself, and then our uh, cadre of other good friends that we brought with us, all with a special skill, all with something to add to the expedition. But Wes and I co-led this this trip and it was three months long one of the longer trips I've, I've ever been on we we left from New Zealand and uh, pounded our way for two weeks from New Zealand down to the Ross Sea where we um, did our research here we have a Tina Fort uh, sea jelly uh, this is an Antarctica species and um, it, you have what you see there were their tentacles hanging down the side they use for hunting and uh, uh, and then the uh, body cavity which uh, which they use for uh, digesting and uh, reproductive purposes um, and this is what it looks like when you're under pack ice you, you look up and you see all this ice floating around on top of you and and, and hope that you can find a place to, to get out uh, when you want to uh, we always seem to find a way to uh, to get out after we we slip down uh, under the pack ice and we would cruise along uh, studying the structure of the iceberg and uh, importantly looking for for life looking for animals uh, and plants uh, on the on the berg uh, right now we're coming up on an ice fish which is a, a particular type of fish that has uh, antifreeze-like substances in its blood. And the reason it needs these uh, antifreeze uh, characteristics is that it swims in water that is uh, colder than the freezing point of fresh water. And that's because the colligative properties of seawater causes it to freeze uh, a couple of degrees uh, Celsius below zero. So you can be swimming in water that is below zero uh, and it's quite challenging because our body um, uh, can get frostbite actually from swimming in this water because you're actually swimming in water that will freeze your body if you're not too careful. Um, we did suffer uh, uh, cold, long-term cold damage to our uh, nervous system uh, from this trip. It took my uh, feet about six months to get over it. So thank you to everybody that's uh, been part of this and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I'll try to get some more material up. Uh, West shot all material that never got used and we might as well get it out there and see if you all enjoy it. Thank you very much. Uh, best wishes, uh, Greg.